I'm Oliver Trevina in studio for The Hollywood Reporter, joined by actress and activist Diane Guerrero. How are you? I'm great. Yes? Yes. Wonderful. Wonderful. How you, are you? I, I'm, I'm great. I'm glad you're here. You're busy. Yes. You're always on the move. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you literally got back at 5 a.m. this morning. I did. Yeah. Literally get back. And straight into work. Just gotta get back to it. Because that's what you do. Yeah. There's always something going on. I keep it moving. Yeah, juggling series. Books, memoirs, it's uh, its happening, it's yeah. happening. Yeah, it's been an exciting time for me. It has, I think that's an understatement. Massively exciting time. <laughs> but also now you're putting everything out there really. Is that strange or is it like a weird moment when you put a memoir out? Yeah, it's not its not the easiest thing to do. Right. Um, I didn't even think I was gonna do that. I, I just, I started by sharing an op-ed and that was like one page of something that happened to me and my family and I thought that was going to be it. Right. And the idea for the book came, and I, I immediately said no because I didn't want anyone. I think it was more I was still sort of ashamed right, of, right. of sharing that much information about myself, but also mostly because of my family. I didn't right, want right. to put their information out there. But, you know, I spoke to my mother. She said basically a memoir is from your point of view, from right. your experience. So um, I think that kind of um, eased Ease, ease me a little because I, I knew that if I didn't get everything right, mm-hmm. you know, it's fine. It's, it's right, my right, book. right. It is your book. Yeah. And it's an incredible book. The story is like, I mean, I was mind blown, but it's just such an important message to put across as well. Yes. Um, and yeah, going through that whole transition as such a young girl and then evolving into what you've achieved now is, is inspiring for people as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm really glad and how, of, of how people have received the book, especially young people. Mm-hmm. To, to go to the different universities and speak to, to students has been a real pleasure for me because, you know, I always sort of wanted to be seen or right. viewed as like sort of that academic. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also love school and I think education is so important. Um, so it's been, it's really been a blessing that the kids have been relating to it. And also, I mean, that was the, the reason why I wrote it was so that someone going through this experience right, right, right. could relate to it or couldn't, or could see that somebody also went through it and made it out alive. Right, right. And also for the person who hasn't experienced this or doesn't, you know, know a family right. who, who has been through this and maybe... I had no idea. Yeah. I have to be honest. I mean, I know immigration, obviously I'm British, so I've dealt with my, you know, fair share, but nothing like what your book mm-hmm. portrays, which I think is the, is the why it's so important for you to do something like this. Yeah. I mean, it's just kind of giving you an example of what a fi- what family separation looks like. Right. And hopefully it'll give some people an idea of what the immigration system looks like, which in my opinion, is broken. Right. Um, along with a lot of people's opinions, it's, it's broken. I think it's fair to say it is. I, after, yeah. Especially after reading your story. Sure. If there were any doubts, uh, read this book and you will for sure agree with this young lady. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then the, the, the first edition of the book was released end of last year and now mm-hmm. the young adult version is coming out in, in July. July, July. Yes. right. Yes. I'm so glad you knew that. I did know that. I did know that. Well, you've got too much to think of. Right. You're juggling TV shows, you're doing that. I'm interviewing you. I, I, I'll figure that one out. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's coming out in July, and it's for middle schoolers, and it sort of gives you, like, uh, just a little synopsis of what the what the chapter's about, and it's it's really cute, and um, I'm just, I'm just, I'm so happy to bring it to... Um, to all ages mm-hmm. because it's an important story. And, you know, I, I, I recently saw a children's book um, about a, a similar story about a young girl losing her mother and, and grandmother uh, to to deportation. And, you know, that that's even giving me some ideas of, mm-hmm. like, how can I turn this story into a children's book as well? There you go. Yeah. Maybe into a TV show, maybe into I movies. mean, I'm, knows? Lord knows I'm trying. There you go. Well, like, that, that, that doesn't shock me either. That doesn't shock me either. Um, and tonight's episode of Superior Donuts... Yes when this airs, yeah. um, is actually a storyline that's somewhat familiar, strangely enough. You're the, the, your brother's being chased by immigration. Yes. So in Superior Donuts, normally right. we every week we tackle a certain issue. Right. So whether it's um, race mm-hmm. or police brutality um, we, or uh, poverty, homelessness, whatever it is, we, we do an episode of. And we sort of, it's a 22-minute Right. Uh, comedy. So we sort it's of. A just, it's, a it. it's a funny twist on it. It's a funny twist on, twist on it. it. And you just, you just kind of present the issue and so people can think about right, it. Right, right. Um, and so, of course, um, immigration came up. And right. so. As it, as it would. As it would. <laughs> of yeah. course. And then all the writers came to me and it's like, is this right? 
And so I, you know, it was it was actually an, a good opportunity to work on the script and let them know kind of what was more real mm -hmm. uh, to me. But yeah, it, it was it was a very it was a personal episode, and right. um, I'm really proud of it. I'm really glad that CBS took the initiative to talk about a sensitive subject as immigration because it's not easy to talk about. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, the show in general, as, as you mentioned, it touches on these kind of important issues. You catch yourself laughing, but then you're like funny but there's a lot of truth to that right yeah and then it makes you think which is great because yeah. you get to laugh and think sure at the same time. absolutely yeah. in my opinion i mean that's what these stories should be about it, it, they should inform you as well mm -hmm. it's amazing um how has that been on the show doing the comedy and stuff like that you enjoy it is it, is it hard to keep a straight straight face because the, the cast is hilarious they're hilarious their chemistry yeah. is brilliant yeah it's hard to keep a straight face sometimes um but it's been great i've never done a sitcom before right, right. Um, I've always loved uh, like old school sitcoms like Happy Days, Taxi, um, Laverne and Shirley. I've, I was always watching those shows. I mean, it was TV land, obviously. I wasn't there when they were on. But um, I, I always had this fantasy of being in one of those shows, and now I am. And I'm, I'm with uh, Judd Hirsch from mm -hmm. Taxi, mm -hmm. which was one of my favorite yeah. shows, too. So I'm learning a lot. Right, right. Yeah. And going back, obviously, Orange is the New Black, Jane the Virgin, it's an eclectic mix of characters. Do you enjoy that challenge, going from show to show? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, lo I love playing different characters, and I love telling different stories from different perspectives. Um, I just hope I can continue uh, doing more. You will continue. Yes. You will continue. Yeah, you haven't <laughs> stopped. And yet, when I read, you, you studied something completely different in college. Yeah, I studied political science and communication. Yeah, yeah. And yeah then, but it's sort of all coming. It's. Full I circle. mean, it, you're making it come full yeah. circle. It doesn't tend to do that in the world of acting. No. no. It. Well, yeah, I guess not. I mean, I always, I always said, you know, I, I always try to say yes to myself. That's sort of my message in the book: is mm -hmm. giving yourself the chance to try something new, something that you've always been interested in. Right. And so. Now, um, with, with the book and, and, and doing my talks and stuff, um, it, it has given me that opportunity, so much so that I actually did a uh, docu-series. I did an episode on, of a docu-series called America Divided. Okay. I got a chance to be a journalist there for a go. week, and I never thought that I could do something like that, and, and look at me, I'm doing documentaries. So it really cool. is going full circle. It, it, really, I mean, it is. really is. It, it really, really is. is. So yeah. what's next then? What would you like to do if you could do anything? Anything next? Any role next that kind of is in your mind? Oh, I'd like to play that. Anything pop to mind? Well, I mean, right now I'm 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 just working on seeing how I can take my story mm -hmm. and making it into a film. And there's so many angles that I can take it. I've already tried to make it into a series that didn't quite work. However, I'm I'm still very passionate about this story. It's very relevant in my mind right now. So I think I'm going to keep working on that. That's it. Well, it's such an important message. Yeah. You've got to keep pushing it. Absolutely. And that's it. So this this isn't going to be the first we're going to talk about this. I'm sure you'll be coming back for the TV show and the movie. Um, we're going to wrap this up with THR's top five. Okay. Five easy questions. I'm hoping they're easy. I, I hope they're if easy. If they're not, you can just say, no, nope, not doing it. Pass. You can pass, but I'll think of something else. Okay. So you won't get away with it. There's, okay. There'll be five, whatever <laughs> happens. Okay. Um, TV show that you watched as a kid that you wish you were in? Uh, Eureka's Castle. But okay. there were puppets. <laughs> I never saw Eureka's Castle. Well, <laughs> explain this to me, because this is, this is more than just a question now. It's like a, it's a puppet show. I wonder if... I've, like Sesame Street. It's like Sesame Street, okay. yes. And there was just a big dragon and a castle, and they were just like really funny puppets. Okay, Eureka's Castle. Yeah. I'll check it out. That's Good one. Um, one actor who inspires you? One actor that inspires me... Uh, Penelope Cruz. And I actually also named my dog Penelope Cruz Guerrero. It's great. It's great. So that yeah, I love her. clearly, you yeah. clearly you do love her. I do love her. Um, one word to describe your journey as an actress so far. Uh, I, challenging. Challenging. <laughs> I, <laughs> it ain't easy. From being from producer. knowing your story, I probably would have guessed <laughs> it's that. A little challenging. If we'd done that, like you know, card game, that where you turn it away and you have to write, uh -huh. I think we would have got that. Then. You, yeah. Yeah, we would have got that. Yeah. Um, last show that you binge watched. On my block. Okay. Oh, it's on. Not... You haven't heard of no, it. It's no. on. It's on Netflix. It's a young show with okay. like young, new, fresh faces, but they're all kids of color. Okay. And it's it's. I'm so proud watching that because I haven't. You know, before Orange Is the New Black, right, right. I really hadn't seen many shows where it had, you know, brown and black kids going to high school, mm -hmm. like living mm -hmm. a normal life. Um, and the show does a good job of representing kind of like. You know, the, a day in the life of the uh, of this of these high school okay. students, and and it's really exciting to watch, and I'm very proud. I'll check it out. Okay. Yeah. Between that and Eureka's Castle, that's my weekend. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't you, know if you're gonna like the lineup. Well, well I'll, I'll give it. Maybe a go. Maybe not Eureka's Castle. If you have, do you have oh kids? no, I'm doing I'm doing Eureka's Castle. No, I don't have kids. I have you, a dog. 
The dog would love it. Dog would love it. Yeah. Perfect for dogs, Eureka's Castle. Yes. Um, you, uh, you've been through so much and so strong. Do you have a favourite saying or quote? Uh, I wondered, I wondered what you kind of, you know, if there's a, a thing that you live by. Yeah, I mean, my, my aunt would always say, everything in this life you can fix, except death. That's morbid. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a perfect way to wrap it up. I mean, we're, we're both still here, so yeah, we can fix whatever just went on for 10 minutes. Absolutely. It's perfect. Cool. No, we can. It's a pleasure. That's the message. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs>